I've been to prison five times. I've been to prison for uh, break and enter, driving while disqualified, driving under the influence of ice and escape police custody. The hardest thing about coming out of prison is being homeless and the stigma. Later in the week. Yep. So yeah. Yippee. May we sign the leases on yeah. um, Wednesday. So. I've got some underwear, some papers, my release papers, and fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's what we come out with. So um, not much. The manager of security obviously didn't tell Mr. Reed. But even I don't know. Like yeah. when's anyway? I'm I'm out now and yeah. Yeah. New beginnings. New beginnings, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been inside for six months now, so it's um, great to be out. It's fabulous. Like, I'm... Yeah! <laughs> I'm ecstatic, really. And um, it's so good to have my mum. Yeah, thank you, Mama. Oh. Oh, is it for the world? I know. It's Mama. <laughs> and Annie, how do you feel today? I feel really excited. Um, I guess there's a little bit of anxiousness there, but... Um, yes. We, you know, it's new beginnings for you and uh, yeah. and for us as a family. So yeah. yeah. Anyway. Every time I get out, oh, Mum's been there and tried to get accommodation for me because I couldn't go home to Dad's because um, that's where I'd, I like I'd just robbed his house really. So I put them through a lot of stress for the last, for definitely the last four years, um, but before that, really since I was 16. They're sad. They were when I drink, I have diminished capacity, so I make really poor choices. To Then I, I get drunk and go and hang out with people that are on ice, and then I get on the ice, and then I don't sleep for four days, um, and then I'm a drunk again, and um, next thing I know, um, I'm stealing cars and um, really dangerous behaviour. This is the last time Very I have to talk to you on the phone while you're in prison. So, yeah. And wait for that. The impact for myself for Becky's prison terms has been time and cost and heartache. <laughs> but mostly it's been the heartache around it, you know, having to um, talk about the, with your friends that, you know, I'm going to visit my daughter in prison today. It's a real shame thing. Um, and leaving her there. When you leave, you know, it's, it was really hard. I am never going back to prison. I have had enough. I've, I've definitely grown from this experience and I, I, yeah, I just, I'm not coming back. I can't, I cannot go back. That, it's just that I, there's no ifs, buts or maybes. I'm just not going back. Becky and I have just moved into a new place on the south coast of New South Wales. And I guess if I didn't think she'd turned over a new leaf and was ready to make some positive changes in her life, I wouldn't have done that. Yep. Can you put these in this cupboard here? Yep. Is that what this one's for? Yep. When Becky was using, because she was such an opportunist um, thief, she would, um, I would hide things like my car keys, my wallet, my phone, laptop, under my pillow whenever, you know, I went to bed. I have had a very tense relationship with my mum in the past, but I am rebuilding that. Mum has given me more than a few chances and I have let her down more than a few times. 
in here as well. A few years ago now, Becky stole some precious and irreplaceable things from a house that I was looking after. And for me, it really gutted me. That, that particular time, she'd stolen lots of things before in the past. But that particular occasion, it was Mother's Day and we'd been out for a lovely lunch. But that night when I went off to work, she came back to the house and, and took those things. And with it, my trust that, you know, that she stole the trust that other people had in me. And that was really, really tough. And I went into a bit of a spiral myself at that point. I have done a lot of personal growth. My self-esteem was shocking, like, and, my, and I'm pretty good now. I was six when I was sexually abused. The effect that that had on my life, um, oh, was, like, devastating. My dad wanted to believe me. My mum just flat out, no, did not believe me, which was really hard. And then my parents actually got divorced not long after that. I don't even know if the abuse affected me as much as um, not being believed. I went from a little happy girl to a really, um, I started to compulsively eat. I blew up to a little fat kid. I just thought everyone um, loved me because they had to love me. I feel a lot of regret and shame around that I didn't believe Becky when she told me she was sexually abused as a young child. I had no reason to believe that that could possibly happen, you know, I just didn't, I was very naive. I do wonder if we as parents had um, believed her earlier and acted on that, that maybe, just maybe, it wouldn't have gone as badly as it has. If I could change one thing in my life and hers, I would go back and fix that and make sure it never happened. If Becky hadn't been sexually molested, I'm sure her life would have been better. She wouldn't have hung around with the people she did. I had such low self-worth. I thought I was unlovable. I didn't really get to do all the things that 16-year-olds did because of my involvement with a pretty violent relationship. I think Becky was attracted to violent people to protect her because I'm not a violent person and obviously I didn't protect her. I have 100% um, used their guilt against them um, oh, for all sorts of things, so from justifying stealing their cars um, to justifying them to giving me money. Um, so when I would go to jail, I would um, use that against them, like, this is your fault. She's broken into my house at least 50 times. She's stolen, and to get into the house, she's broken windows, she's broken locks, she's gone through walls. We spent about 10 grand on the ground floor to put security screens on doors, on all the windows and doors. We put a $5,000 camera system in. We put lights to light up at night. It's just horrendous. You go cold at night when you hear noises, when you... It's, it's just... It's just bad news all around. It's a security screen that Dale put on. Um, it's a pretty so that one's job. pretty much bulletproof? For, yeah, that one's a fairly... Um, it's not going anywhere. It's the amount of money Becky's um, stolen for me over the years, so this, I would um, estimate over 100000 possibly more. Is actually, that's the door to my bedroom, so... And I used to have a key to that, but I don't... I've know. broken um, through the interior walls of the house. Everyone in our family has got a key lock on their door because I had um, a deadlock, a dead lock and a key lock, a dead lock key locks because I'd actually um, broken into everybody's rooms. Um, I would pick the locks, but then also um, I I cut through the um, plasterboard from one room into the other room. Yeah. It's um, it's a killer drug. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> It's all better now. <laughs> Good. I'll be very happy with that. Okay. 
my sister was so over me. She refused to come to the jails the last couple of times that I was in. She'd had a gutful. And so she wrote me this letter and she said, you know what, Becky, you are not the only person that's been abused. You're not the only person that's had trauma. Yes, I feel for you. And yes, it sucks, but you actually, you need to just get over it because you can't keep doing this. And I was like, oh, I really can't keep doing this anymore. Like, yes, shit happens, but there is a lot more shit that has happened to other people in the world. So you can definitely move through trauma. There's no point in holding on to it and me being a victim of it because um, it was actually destroying my life. Women's prisons are filled with stories um, of people like me. So um, people that have had trauma, abuse, um, really violent relationships, um, and like, and I said to the girls actually this last time, I said, you know, we're actually pretty lucky that we get to jail because a lot of women don't even get here. A lot of women. Um, are killed through domestic violence. A lot of women um, are broken and and are in prison in their own house. Um, so for me, um, it's really sad. Like it's actually very sad to think that um, that we end up um, in prison after such hectic um, pasts. Yeah. Hello, my name's Becky. How are you? Good, thank you. That's okay. good. So I really need to find a job, so I've decided to be proactive. Um, have you guys been looking for anyone, or are you looking for anyone? We are, actually. Okay, cool. So I've worked um, in bakeries. I, I have never worked with meat and knives. I've worked at the bank, mm -hmm. so um, I'm pretty good with Good customer service. Skills. I am great. Yep, yeah. great customer service. That's skills. the battle, really. Yeah. If you've got like good customer service, yeah. you're already like. I'm happy, and there. I can. Um, so the thing is with me, I've actually just I've have got a criminal history. Mm -hmm. Been released from prison, okay. so um, I'm still clean. I haven't um, used in seven months. So for me. Um, this is about getting back on my feet, and, and that's my story. Um, okay. If so, if you would like to have a think about it, that would be yeah, fabulous. Sure. Okay, I'm cool. More than happy to give you a trial. Okay, fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Erica. <laughs> Take care. See you. It was nice to meet you. Bye. You <laughs> Thank you. I'm having a trial at the butchers today. I will do fine. I do, I'm okay with the people. There you go. I'll pop that in the window. Yep. Just down there. And, so, and what is this called? Butterfly leg lamp. Butterfly. Women coming out of prison do find it hard to find jobs because a lot of people do do police checks, but I think that if you're upfront and honest about it first, that people will give you a go. I mean, we all do stupid things, so I feel like everyone deserves a second chance. Five, ten, fifteen dollars and ten cents right. change. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. She looks great, she's very friendly, and to be honest, I don't really care about people's history. I care about what they're going to do with us and in the future. I feel wrapped about getting the job, so amazing. It's, um, oh, just, like, there's a lot of weight lifted. So we weigh the paper. My boss is amazing. Erica is fabulous. She has given me the chance to really have a new life. I've probably used too much paper, so you get better at it. <laughs> I'm not allowed to drive until 2042. So I'll be almost 60 by the time I can get my license back. My driving record is horrendous. So I've lost my license about 11 times. For, it's suspended from speeding, not wearing pee plates, pretty radical stuff. When I was 18 to, well, how am I, 31? So until I was about 28, probably, really, like just horrendous driving record. And then I got done driving under the influence, so... The influence of what? Um, methamphetamines. So I 
um, was picked up five times for that. Driving under the influence of ice is, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone because you've got no feeling or no, um, like you've got no conscience of what you're actually doing. So you, when you drive erratically, when you put people's lives in danger, um, and I'm definitely not proud of, of doing that. Um, and you don't care, like you just, the ice takes every feeling, it numbs everything. You've got, um, it's like you've got no responsibility, you're invincible, um, the rules don't apply to you. Yeah, it's just tough. To think that I was so careless with life is tough. I have to go to court at the end of January. Welcome, come on through please. Thank you. Becky's facing four charges, so two relate to driving while disqualified and two are called take and drive conveyance, which basically means that you're driving a stolen motor vehicle or you're a passenger of one. So what a different place to meet. Since Becky's been released in November, she hasn't committed any more offences. The offences we're dealing with actually relate to before she was incarcerated the last time. So there is potential that I could go back to jail? Um, there is, Becky. That's, that's a, certainly a real possibility. You have been in jail on, I think, five occasions, you've, mm -hmm. you've told me. Um, so for very similar offences to what you've pled guilty for on this occasion. Mm -hmm. um, so look, there is a real risk, but I am... Becky knows going back to prison would just be absolutely horrific for her. Sending her back to jail again is going to be another band-aid. It's not going to help her long term. In fact, it's just going to make her career prospects and her chance of fitting in society so much less successful. So today is my big day of court. I'm feeling fairly anxious. Um... I don't know what the outcome's going to be, but um, so great news, two of the four charges um, have been dropped. I am pleading guilty to one drive while disqualified and one um, stealing a motor vehicle. So these offences um, happened before I went to prison, so uh, they happened early May. So uh, for me to go back to prison would be um, devastating. I can't even actually imagine it. Like, I actually cannot even think about that because for me it's just not an option. I am not a menace to society anymore. So, Dada, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm a little bit anxious, but... Are um, you? Why? Because I think it'll all be good, but there's always... I know. ...things that don't. She's worked so hard this time to change her life. I don't think it'd do the state any favours for her to go back into incarceration because it's not going to help. Uh, it would just break her soul. If I just do all the right things and I am, I be good and I stay away from um, people that are using, then I, I am, am praying um, with all my heart that I don't go back to prison. Hey, Stephen. Lovely to see you. Becky, welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. Come on Thank in. You. Thank you. I received an intensive corrections order for 12 months. If I step out of line, I will be going straight back to jail. <sighs> so I'm not going to jail, <laughs> so no more jail. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, no more problems. Yeah, no more for problems. The family. <laughs> Dad. No more problems for the family. That would be good. Yeah. All right.